Welcome to the Ultimate Sports Blog Podcast. Today is Tuesday, April 17th, 2018. Today I'm going to recap last night's NBA playoff action, look ahead to tonight's NBA playoff action, recap yesterday's Stanley Cup playoff action, look ahead to tonight's Stanley Cup playoff action, recap yesterday Major League Baseball, and look ahead to today's Major League Baseball games. And I'm going to close the podcast by doing my eighth NFL mock draft this year. NBA playoffs last night, the Miami Heat with an impressive Game 2 win over Philadelphia 76ers, 113-103. Dwayne Wade was just brilliant, turned back the clock, 28 points and 7 rebounds in the win. Ben Simmons was tremendous in defeat, 24 points, 8 assists, and 9 rebounds as the Heat tie up the series at one game apiece. The Warriors defeated the Spurs 116-101. This game went kind of how I thought, except San Antonio had a lead. Kevin Durant was brilliant, 32 points and 6 assists in the win. LaMarcus Aldridge was great, 34 points and 12 rebounds in defeat. And Golden State's up 2-0 in that series. Tonight, you have three games. Wizards-Raptors game 2. Toronto has the leg up 1-0 in the series. I think they make it 2-0 tonight with another win on their home court. You have Milwaukee at Boston game 2. Boston has a leg up on that one. 1-0 with that big overtime game 1 win on Sunday. I think Milwaukee ties it up at 1 apiece with a great effort by Giannis Adetokounmpo. And the series will be 1-1. Pelicans Trailblazers. Game 2. The Pelicans won Game 1 thanks to the brilliant effort of Anthony Davis. This time, I think Damian Lillard and C.J. McCollum have great games and rebound from their Game 1 poor performances. So, give me the Blazers to even up that series of one game apiece. Stanley Cup playoff action. A couple interesting results. The Maple Leafs defeated the Bruins 4-2 as they get on the board in the series. Boston leads the series now two games to one. First period, three minutes left. James Van Riemsdyk, second of the playoffs on the power play, assisted by Tyler Bozak and Morgan Riley. one nothing Maple Leafs. Second period, three minutes into the period. Adam McQuaid ties up the game at one apiece on his first goal of the Stanley Cup playoffs, assisted by... Tim Schaller and Sean Corrali. A few seconds later, Patrick Marlowe's first of the playoffs, assisted by Mitch Marner and Morgan Riley, give the Maple Leafs a 2-1 lead. Three minutes later, Zidane Chara ties it up at two apiece. His first of the playoffs, assisted by Sean Corrali and Nick Holden. Later on in the second period, Austin Matthews' first goal of the Stanley Cup playoffs, assisted by William Nylander and Zach Hyman, put the Maple Leafs up 3-2. And in the third period, Patrick Marlowe's second goal of the game, second of the playoffs, assisted by Mitch Marner and Thomas Bukanitz, gave the Maple Leafs a 4-2 lead for good. Good bounce-back game for Freddie Anderson in this game as he had 40 saves on 42 shots. Tuka Rask, 26 saves on 30 shots. So that was your game, and the Maple Leafs, pick up a win and look to even up the series tomorrow night. The Devils defeated the Lightning 5-2 to get on the board in this series, and now Tampa's series lead is 2-1. No scoring in the first period, but in, in very early in the second period, Alex Korn's fourth goal of the playoffs on the power play gave the Lightning a 1-0 lead, assisted by Nikita Kucherov and Steven Skamkos. Taylor Hall ties up the game at one apiece on his second goal of the playoffs. Third period, a couple seconds into it, Steven Stamkos, his first of the playoffs on the power play, gave the Lightning a 2-1 lead, assisted by Nikita Kucherov and Alex Kalorn. The Devils got a power play at 5-on-3, and Will Butcher ties the game at 2 apiece on his first goal of the Stanley Cup playoffs, assisted by Taylor Hall and Kyle Palmieri. Stefan Noessen's first of the Stanley Cup playoffs gave the Devils a 3-2 lead, assisted by Taylor Hall and Andy Green. Blake Coleman, empty net goal, shorthanded, 4-2 Devils. And Ben Lovejoy's first of the playoffs, another empty net goal for the Devils to put it away at 5-2. to two. Tremendous win for New Jersey. Great come from behind win for them. Corey Schneider started in net. That was the right decision by John Hines. 34 saves on 36 shots. 
Andre Vasilevsky was pretty good as well, despite giving up three goals. 36 saves on 39 shots. Looking forward to this game four. The Avalanche defeated the Predators 3-5. The Avalanche defeated the Predators 5-3 to get on the board in this series as Nashville now has a 2-1 series lead. This game was pretty much all Avalanche. First period, a minute 50 in. Blake Komu, second of the playoffs, assisted by Carl Soderberg and Matt Nieto. Got the Avs on the board, 1-0. 2-0 Avs on Gabriel Baroque, second of the playoffs, assisted by Patrick Nemeth and JT Comfer. Nathan McKinnon, second of the playoffs, made it 3-0 Colorado, assisted by Gabriel Landeskog. Second period, Nathan McKinnon, second of the game, third of the playoffs, assisted by Gabriel Landeskog and Miko Rottenen, 4-0 Colorado. Pekka Rene was pulled from this game. Ryan Johansson got the Preds on the board on his second goal of the playoffs on the power play, assisted by Philip Forsberg and Ryan Nellis to make it a 4-1 game. Third period, Colton Sissons, the second of the playoffs, made it a teeny bit interesting. Assisted by Roman Yossi and Ryan Ellis to cut the Avs lead to 4-2. to two. Gabriel Landeskog's second of the playoffs, assisted by Miko Rottenen and Mark Barabo, put the Avs up 5-2. to two. And a garbage goal by Austin Watson, his third of the playoffs, to make the score look a little bit respectable at 5-3. to three. Nate McKinnon was outstanding. He was the best player on the ice yesterday for the Avalanche. Jonathan Bernier was really good. 29 saves on 32 shots. Rene was awful. His worst game of the playoffs so far. 11 saves on 15 shots. Saros did a nice job in relief with 18 saves on 18 shots. So, And that last goal by the Avalanche was an empty net goal. So, Soros pitched a shutout in relief. If I'm the prize, just go back to Rene, please. He's the better goalie. Soros is a serviceable backup, but Rene's just better. The Sharks defeated the Ducks by an impressive score of 8-1 to one on home ice to give themselves a 3-0 to zero series lead. It was all Sharks from the get-go. First period, Logan Couture, second of the playoffs, assisted by Mikel Bodecker, gives the Sharks a 1-0 lead. Ricard Raquel on the power play, his first of the playoffs, assisted by Brandon Montour and Ryan Getzlaff, tied it up at one apiece. The Sharks literally took over from there. Second period, Yuna Skoski, first of the playoffs, assisted by Evander Kane, 2-1 to one Sharks. Marcus Sorensen, second of the playoffs, assisted by Junis Donskoe to get the Sharks up 3-1. to one. Eric Fair's first goal of the playoffs, 4-1 Sharks, assisted by Marcus Sorensen and Melker Carlson. Thomas Hurdle, second of the playoffs on the power play, assisted by Joe Popelski and Logan Couture to put the Sharks up 5-1. to one. Third period, Joe Popelski's first of the playoffs, assisted by Junis Dunskoe and Timo Mayer to put the Sharks up 6-1. to one. Evander Kane started the playoffs on the power play, assisted by Mark Edward Vlasic and Logan Couture to put the Sharks up 7-1. to one. And Timo Mayer's first of the playoffs on the power play, assisted by Chris Tierney and Kevin LeBlanc. To put the Sharks up 8-1 to one for good. Martin Jones just absolutely tremendous in this game. 45 saves on 46 shots. So that final score may look a little bit deceiving. Because of all the saves Jones has made in this game. Ryan Miller saw some time. Gave up. Three goals, and only had nine saves on 12 shots. And then Gibson, five goals on 24 shots and had 19 saves. So, should be interesting to see what the Ducks do in that. If I'm the Ducks facing elimination, you go with your better guy in Gibson. Ryan Miller, I don't think, is the same goalie as he was with the Sabres back in the day. You have three games tonight. Columbus hosting Washington, 7.30 NBCSN tonight. This should be a very interesting game. I made the case about Anaheim 
being better on the road than at home in a big spot. I feel the same way about Washington. Alex Ovechkin guaranteed that they'd be back at D.C. for Game 5. I actually think the Caps steal this game. I'm going to think it's a low-scoring game. Let's say 2-1 to one Caps. Holtby is the Holtby of old as he's finally starting over Philip Gallbauer. Holtby's the better goalie, and he should have been the starter to begin the playoffs, or maybe the Capitals would be 1-1 or up 2-0 if that was the decision made before the series started. Jets wild. Big game for both of these teams. I think the Wild even up the series at two apiece tonight. The Jets will be without one of their key players, and I think the Wild will take advantage of that to even up the series at two apiece. The Golden Knights at the Kings. See if the Golden Knights can advance tonight. I'm going to say they don't, and the Kings play to live another day. So give me the Los Angeles Kings 3-2 in regulation to force a Game 5 back in Las Vegas. And the Jets' wild score, let's go 4-2 wild in that game. Major League Baseball, some interesting results. There was a few more rainouts and games postponed yesterday. The Blue Jays game yesterday got postponed due to a leak in the roof of the Rogers Center. So they're playing a double header, a very rare double header in the Rogers Center today. And let's get started with all the games from yesterday. The Yankees absolutely destroyed the Marlins 12-1. It was a game that they absolutely had to have. You need to take advantage of bad teams on your schedule. The Yankees move up to 8-7. and seven. Miami drops to 4-12. and 12. Luis Severino with the win. Caleb Smith with the loss. All Yankees in this one. Bomb the first inning. Gary Sanchez infield single. one nothing Yanks. Bases loaded walk. Tyler Austin, 2 nothing Yanks. Bottom of the second. Home run, Aaron Judge, his fourth of the year, 3 nothing Yanks. Bottom of the third, two-run double, Aaron Hicks, 5 nothing Yanks. Bottom of the fourth, home run, Didi Gregorius, his fourth of the year, 7 nothing Yanks. Bottom of the fifth, RBI double, Miguel Andujar, 8 nothing Yanks. RBI single, Aaron Judge, 9 nothing Yanks. Two-run single, Gary Sanchez, 11 nothing Yanks. Bottom of the seventh, Didi Gregorius, home run, his second of the game, his fifth of the year, 12 nothing Yanks in the... Marlins get their garbage run on a fielder's choice by Justin Bohr to get the Marlins at least on the board. Luis Severino, outstanding. Great bounce back start for Seve. Six innings, one hit, one walk, eight strikeouts, no earned runs. Leaves the game with a 2.63 ERA. He'll be in the hunt for the American League Cy Young Award throughout the year. Caleb Smith, two and a third innings, five hits, five earned runs, five walks, three strikeouts. Leaves the game with an ugly. 6.89 ERA. The Rockies defeat the Pirates 6-2 as they improve to 10-8. Pittsburgh drops to 11-5. Herman Marquez with the win. Stephen Brault with the loss. Top of the first. RBI double. Chris Sionetta in the top of the first. Put the Rockies up 1-0. Also in the top of the first. RBI ground out by Charlie Blackman to put the Rockies up 2-0. Top of the fourth, three-run home run, Trevor Story, 5 nothing rocks. Bottom of the fifth, sacrifice fly, Colin Moran to get the Pirates on the board. Bottom of the sixth, RBI triple by Starling Marte to get the Pirates within three. In the top of the eighth, home run, Charlie Blackman. Rockies take a 6-2 lead for good. Herman Marquez, six innings, two hits, two earned runs, two walks, seven strikeouts. I'm sorry, six strikeouts, leaves the game with a... 4.34 ERA. Stephen Brault, six innings, five hits, five earned runs, two walks, and a strikeout leaves the game with a 4.74 ERA. The Rays defeated the Rangers 8 to 4 as they improve to 4 and 12. Texas drops to 6 and 12. Blake Snell with the win. Martin Perez with the loss. Bottom of the first, RBI single. Wilson Ramos, 1 nothing Rays. Bottom of the second, Fielder's choice by Joey Wendell. Ref Snyder scored and then field scored on the throwing error by Jerickson Profar. So two runs there to make it 3 nothing Rays. Also in the bottom of the second, RBI single Carlos Gomez, 4 nothing Rays. Then RBI single Hector Ramos, 5 nothing Rays. Bottom of the third, a Danny Hecavarita safe on the error by 
the shortstop Drew Robinson to make it 6 nothing Rays. Top of the fourth, home run Joey Gallo to make it a 6-1 to game. Bottom of the fourth, C.J. Crone answers back with a home run to make it 7-1 Rays. Also in the bottom of the fourth, home run Daniel Robertson to put the Rays up 8-1. to And the top of the eighth, the Rangers make the score look a little bit more respectable with the home run by Nomar Mazzara, a three-run shot to make it 8-4. to Blake Snell was pretty good. Six and a third innings, five hits, one earned run, and nine strikeouts. Leaves the game with a 2.95 ERA. Martin Perez, awful. Four innings, ten hits, seven earned runs, three walks, four strikeouts. Leaves the game with a 13.14 ERA. Perez has been perhaps Major League Baseball's worst starting pitcher so far this season. A big win for the Washington Nationals. 8-6 winners over the first place New York Mets as they improved to 8-9. The Mets dropped to 12-3. A.J. Cole with the win. A.J. Ramos with the loss. Ryan Madsen with the save. Top of the first, a broken bat home run by Bryce Harper to put the Nats up 1-0. Bottom of the first, Mets tied up on an RBI single by Todd Frazier. Bottom of the third, an RBI double by Todd Frazier to put the Mets up 2-1. Bottom of the sixth, Jacob DeGrom sacrificed the first to drive in Juan Lagares to put the Mets up 3-1. Then Ahmed Rosario, grounder into fielder's choice to score in Jose Lobatone to put the Mets up 4-1. to one. Bottom of the seventh, two-run home run as Durbo Cabrera, 6-1 Mets. Top of the eighth, here come the Nationals. Two-run single, Bryce Harper to get them within three. Also on the top of the eighth, bases little walk, Matt Reynolds, the x met to get the Nats within two. And the game-tying single by Wilmer Diffo to drive in two. Ties it up at six apiece. Top of the eighth, Michael A. Taylor walks as Matt Reynolds scores to give the Nats a 7-6 to six lead. And in the top of the ninth, a home run by Howie Kendrick. And Kendrick's been pretty solid for them thus far this season. Put the Nats up 8-6 to six for good. Jeremy Hellickson was not very good. Four and two-thirds innings, seven hits, two and runs, a walk, and three strikeouts. Leaves the game with a 3.86 ERA. Jacob DeGrom was excellent. Seven and two-thirds innings, six hits, three earned runs, a walk, and 12 strikeouts. Leaves the game with a 3.24 ERA. The Braves feed the Phillies 2-1 to one as they improve the 9-6. and six. Philadelphia drops the 9-6 and six after winning six straight games. Julio Tehran with the win, Aaron Noah with the loss, Arodis Viciano with the save. Top of the first home run, Abdubal Herrera, 1-0 Phillies. Bottom of the first, Freddie Freeman, RBI ground out into a double play that scored in, and Darren Ciarte to tie it up at one apiece. And in the bottom of the fourth, sacrifice fly, Kurt Suzuki, 2-1 is your final. Julio Tehran, his best start of the early season, six innings, five hits, one run, three walks, nine strikeouts, leaves the game with a 5.4 ERA. Aaron Noah was great again. Six innings, four hits, two earned runs, a walk, and two strikeouts. Leaves the game with a 2.22 ERA. The Reds defeated the Brewers 10-4 to end their losing streak. They improved the 3-13. Milwaukee drops to 8-9. Luis Castillo with the win. Brent Sutter with the loss. All Reds pretty much in this one. Top of the second. RBI single, Tucker Barnhart went off in Reds. Top of the second as well. Two-run single by Billy Hamilton. 3 nothing Reds. Top of the sixth. RBI double, Scooter Jeanette, 4-0 Reds. Top of the six, Luis Castillo, RBI single, 5-0 Reds. RBI single, Billy Hamilton, 6-0 Reds. RBI double, that drove in two for Jose Peraza, 8-0 Reds. Also on the top of the six, RBI double, Joey Votto, 9-0 Reds. Bottom of the seventh, a two-run double by Jorge Lopez to get the Brewers on the board, 9-2 game. Bottom of the seventh, Jacob Nottingham scores on the wild pitch to make it a 9-3 game. RBI single, Jonathan Villar made it a 9-4 game. And then the top of the eighth, the Reds answer back. RBI double, Adam Duvall to make it a 10-4 Reds lead. And now is your scoring for good. Castillo is pretty solid. Six and two-thirds innings, five hits, four runs, three walks, and eight strikeouts. Leaves the game with a 6.75 ERA. Sutter, not so much. Five innings, six hits, three runs, and four strikeouts. Leaves the game with a 4.87 ERA. 
The Athletics defeated the White Sox 8-1 as they improved to 7-10. The White Sox dropped to 4-9. Daniel Mangden with the win. Reynaldo Lopez with the loss. I saw a stat before. This was Mangden's first home win in his career. He was 0-10 at the Coliseum. But now gets his first win as a home player for the Athletics. Bottom of the fourth, home run medals and one nothing A's. Bottom of the fifth, RBI double, Chris Davis, 2 nothing A's. Bottom of the seventh, two-run score on a Jed Lowry grounder into a fielder's choice. There was a couple errors that scored in two runs to make it 4 nothing A's. Bottom of the seventh, Chris Davis grounds into a double play as Marcus Simeon scores. 5 nothing A's. Bottom of the eighth. RBI single Steven Piscotti, 6 nothing A's. Bottom of the eighth, two run single Jed Lowry, 8 nothing A's. In the top of the ninth, a garbage run for the White Sox on a home run by Jose Abreu to make it an 8 1 game. Daniel Megden was really good, 8 innings, 6 hits, 1 earned run, 1 walk, 6 strikeouts, leaves the game with a 4.5 VRA. Reynaldo Lopez, 6 innings, 4 hits, 2 earned runs, 4 walks, and 10 strikeouts, leaves the game with a 1.42 ERA. This was not all Reynaldo's fault. The White Sox couldn't hit and the bullpen fell apart. Reynaldo Lopez was off to a good start this season. The Mariners 2-1 win over the Astros as they improve to 9-5. Houston drops to 10-7. James Paxton with the win. Dallas Keiko with the loss. Edwin Diaz with the save. Top of the first home run. George Springer 1-0 in Houston. Bottom of the fourth home run. Nelson Cruz. 1-1 1-1 game, bottom of the sixth, RBI double, Dean Gordon, 2-1 Mariners, that's their final. James Paxton was brilliant, his best start of the early season, six innings, three hits, one run, three walks, seven strikeouts, leaves the game the 4.57 ERA. Dallas Keuchel, the dreaded complete game loss, eight innings, six hits, two earned runs, and walk and six strikeouts, leaves the game the 3.52 ERA. You can tell Houston was trying to avoid their bullpen, but to A.J. Hinch's credit, Dallas Keuchel had a low pitch count, so... Keiko pitched well, but it's always dreaded when you get the complete game defeat. The Dodgers, 10-3 winners over the Padres as they improve to 6-9. San Diego drops to 7-11. Hazen Ryu with the win. Robbie Irwin with the loss. Top of the second, RBI double. Yasmani Grandal, 1-0 Dodgers. Bomb the second, home run. Christian Villanueva gets the Padres up 2-1. Dodgers took over from there. Top of the third. Corey Seager safe at third on the throwing error by Hunter Renfro to score in Chris Taylor to make it a 2-2 game. RBI single, Kiki Hernandez, 3-2 Dodgers. Three-run home run, Matt Kemp, 6-2 Dodgers. And then no more scoring for the Dodgers until the top of the ninth with a grand slam by Yasmani Grandal, 10-2 Dodgers. Bottom of the ninth, garbage RBI single by Frankie Cordero to get the Padres within seven. 10-3 was your final. Hazen Ryu with a second straight good start. Six innings, three hits, two earned runs, nine strikeouts. Leaves the game with a 2.87 ERA. Robbie Erlin, mm, not so good. Three innings, six hits, four earned runs, two walks, four strikeouts. Leaves the game with a 4.4 ERA. Orioles Red Sox was postponed. Cardinals Cubs was postponed. And I told you the story about the Royals Blue Jays game being postponed as well. And that's your first game today, so it's a doubleheader at the Rogers Center, a rare run. Eric Skogland against Jaime Garcia in game one of that doubleheader. That's a 3 o'clock game. Orioles-Tigers at 640 tonight. Andrew Kashner, who's pitched pretty well for Baltimore against Francisco Liriano, who's pitched pretty well for Detroit. In my opinion, a battle of two pitchers who I think are going to be traded at the trade deadline as long as they pitch pretty well. Rockies-Pirates. The Pirates looking up to even up the series at one apiece. Chad Bettis against Trevor Williams. You have Game 2 Royals-Blue Jays with Danny Duffy against Joe Biggiani. You have the Nationals at the Mets. The Mets looking to bounce back from the disappointing loss from last night. Zach Wheeler against Gio Gonzalez. And Wheeler was really good in his first start. Granted, it was against the Marlins. We'll see how he does tonight. Indians against the Twins from... San Juan, Puerto Rico, so that's interesting. Corey Kluber against Jake Odorizzi, that's an FS1 game. So I have to pick it. Corey Kluber, who is traditionally got off the slow starts this season, is off to a good start this season. Has a 1.57 ERA. I think he pitches brilliantly. 
as the Indians take game one in San Juan to defeat their division rival to get within one in the loss column in the AL Central this early into the season. You have the Rangers at the Rays. Matt Moore against Yanni Torinos. Torinos has been really good as a starter for Tampa Bay so far this season. You have Philadelphia at Atlanta again. Nick Paveda against Mike Fulton units. Let's see if Philly bounces back from the difficult 2-1 loss. At least it's not Gabe Kapler's fault this time. At least he kept Aaron Nola in that game longer. You have Cincinnati at Milwaukee. Milwaukee looking to bounce back from that dreadful loss from yesterday. You have Sal Romano against Junior Guerrera. You have the Cardinals at the Cubs. Let's hope they play today because there's been mess of a weather in Chicago. Tyler Chatwood against Adam Wainwright. You have Giants Diamondbacks tonight. Johnny Cueto against Patrick Corbin. That's an interesting game. White Sox Athletics. You have Miguel Gonzalez against Trevor Cahill. Cahill making his first start of the season. Astros Mariners. Let's see if the Astros can pick off Seattle here. Lance McCullers Jr. against Ariel Miranda. Miranda's been pretty solid in spot starts for the Mariners in the past. Let's see if he shuts down the Astros offense, which has been struggling of late. And last but not least, Dodgers against the Padres. Let's see if the Dodgers win their third in a row here. Alex Wood, who's been dreadful this season against former Yankee Brian Mitchell. That's your Major League Baseball action for today. Last but not least, before I go, I want to do my mock draft, my eighth mock draft. A lot of changes at the top. Number one, Cleveland Browns. Josh Allen, quarterback, Wyoming. After pegging Sam Darnold in the top spot in all of my mock drafts I did, I finally decided to go with Allen here, as many are speculating that the Browns may take Allen over Darnold. Allen has the most upside among the quarterbacks in this draft class due to his athleticism, arm strength, and size, and draws comparisons to Carson Wentz. Two, New York Giants, Sam Darnold, quarterback, USC. I was told recently that if Darnold is at the board at two, the Giants will take him to be their future quarterback. If not, the pick will be traded. Darnold has the highest floor of all the quarterbacks in this draft, and he has the athleticism, the leadership, good throwing arm, and clutch play as he's shown at the collegiate level. Three, New York Jets from the Indianapolis Colts. Baker Mayfield, quarterback, Oklahoma. There is a lot of speculation that the Jets will take Mayfield here unless Darnold is still on the board. Mayfield has a ton of potential with his gunslinger mentality, although due to his height and off-the-court antics, is compared to Johnny Manziel. Four, Cleveland Browns from the Houston Texans. Bradley Chubb, defensive end, North Carolina State. There is a lot of speculation now that the Browns will take Chubb here to pair it with Miles Garrett. Chubb is a three-down back that would help them pressure opposing quarterbacks, and having him and Garrett together would be a nice start. 5. Denver Broncos Josh Rosen, quarterback, UCLA. Rosen's stock is dropping due to his concussions and his former coach Jim Mora throwing him under the bus. Rosen is perhaps the safest bet in this draft in terms of quarterbacks due to his accuracy and redefining throwing mechanics. 6. Indianapolis Colts from the New York Jets. Quentin Nelson, guard, Notre Dame. The most important thing for the Colts going forward is keeping Andrew Luck healthy. A good start is a better offensive line, and why not pick the best offensive lineman in this draft? Nelson seems like a sure thing and worthy of a top 10 pick and could go as high as fourth overall. 7. Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Saquon Barkley, running back Penn State. What a steal this would be for a team that needs a running back upgrade badly. Barkley is the draft's best player, perhaps, as he could do pretty much everything that a running back can do. He could be Jameis Winston's security blanket for years to come. 8. Chicago Bears. Tremaine Edmonds, linebacker, Virginia Tech. Edmonds' stock has risen recently, and this would be a solid pick for the Bears, who need playmakers on defense. Edmonds will only be 20 years old once the season gets going, and he will give the Bears' defense another look. 9. San Francisco 49ers. Roquan Smith, linebacker, Georgia. With Ruben Foster's future with the team suddenly in doubt after his arrest, the Niners almost have to take a linebacker here if either Smith or Edmonds is available. Smith brings speed and athleticism to the field, and that's a good thing for a young defense. 10. Oakland Raiders. Minka Fitzpatrick, safety, Alabama. This would be a steal here for the Raiders, who have a bigger need for a linebacker, so instead they take Fitzpatrick to bolster their secondary. Fitzpatrick's versatility makes him special and is 
and he's perhaps the best defensive player in this draft. 11, Miami Dolphins, Derwin James, strong safety, Florida State. Perhaps the best defensive playmaker in the draft. James is the new NFL prototype as a safety capable of producing against the run or in both man and zone coverage. Florida State also used him as a pure edge rusher where he regularly pressured the quarterback. 12, Buffalo Bills from the Cincinnati Bengals. Mike McGlinchey, offensive tackle, Notre Dame. After the trading of Cody Glenn, the Bills have a need on the offensive line. McGlinchey isn't that strong, but he's athletic and brings stability. 13, Washington Redskins. Vita Vea, defensive tackle, Washington. Vea, a massive presence in the middle of a defensive line, will go a long way towards fixing that deficiency while also providing enough quickness to penetrate into the backfield on some third downs. He also has quick feet and good movement skill for a big defensive lineman. 14. Green Bay Packers Denzel Ward, cornerback, Ohio State Ward dropping this far would be a massive steal for the Packers, and it would be a no-brainer for them to pick him here. Ward isn't the biggest corner in this draft, but he can cover skills that are hard to come by in the league. 15. Arizona Cardinals Lamar Jackson, quarterback, Louisville the Cards are another trade-up candidate, but here I have them selecting Jackson, who's a good decision-maker and passer. The Cards know that Mike Lennon and Sam Bradford are not the long-term answers at quarterback, and Jackson, in theory, would be in a redshirt situation here. And the long-term foundation of Jackson and David Johnson is tough to pass up on. 16. Baltimore Ravens. Calvin Ridley, wide receiver, Alabama. The Ravens have lacked a big set receiver for years now, and they got one here with Ridley, although... They did sign John Brown and Michael Crabtree. Ridley brings a downfield speedy option on the outside that would bring a different look to the Ravens' offense. 17. Los Angeles Chargers. Leighton Vander Esch, linebacker, Boise State. Vander Esch is rising up many people's mock drafts of late. He's a stellar athlete that could patrol sideline to sideline as the Chargers' three man in line front of him eats up blockers. 18. Seattle Seahawks. Marcus Davenport, defensive end, UTSA. The Seahawks lost so many of their key pieces on their defensive line lately, which makes Davenport a nice selection here. He has athletic moves very well and has physicality, which Pete Carroll would like. 19, Dallas Cowboys. Cortland Sutton, wide receiver, SMU. With the Cowboys releasing Des Bryant, they replace him with Sutton, who could be a possible steal. Sutton put together back-to-back -back seasons of 1,000 yards and 10 touchdowns, and he scored 32 times in all three seasons with the Mustangs. 20. Detroit Lions. Maurice Hurst, defensive tackle, Michigan. Hurst had a heart condition at the Combine, and that shouldn't drop him out of the first round. Hurst doesn't have the size that teams are generally looking for in an interior defensive lineman, but his quickness more than makes up for that deficiency. It makes him, in particular, a great threat rushing the passer on third downs. 21. Cincinnati Bengals from the Buffalo Bills. James Daniels, center, Iowa. Daniels is trending up many people's mock boards, and a ton of people have Daniels linked to Cincinnati. He's a good athlete and good technician for a center. 22, Buffalo Bills from the Kansas City Chiefs. Mason Rudolph, quarterback, Oklahoma State. The Bills are a strong candidate to trade up for a quarterback, but I don't do trades in my mock draft, so here I have them selecting Rudolph. He's an experienced pocket passer with nice downfield touch. 23, New England Patriots from the Los Angeles Rams. Colton Miller, offensive tackle, UCLA. Miller put together a great final season at the collegiate level, and he would fit right away, replacing Nate Solder on the Pats O-line. Miller is big and strong and would help protect Tom Brady during his twilight years. 24, Carolina Panthers, Will Hernandez, guard, UTEP. No-brainer pick here as the Panthers find their replacement for Andrew Norwell. Hernandez is big and powerful, and he provides mobility. Number 25, Tennessee Titans, Harold Landry, linebacker, Boston College. Landry is all over the map in terms of where people have him mocked in these mock drafts. Landry didn't have a great final season in college, but he has the tools to be a solid pro. 26, Atlanta Falcons, Taven Bryan, defensive end, Florida. The Falcons don't have any major needs, but bolstering their defensive line is now necessary that Don Terry Poe left in free agency. Bryant has drawn comparisons to J.J. Watt and will bring depth to the Falcons' defensive line. 27, New Orleans Saints. Dallas Goder, tight end, South Dakota State. Goder's draft stock is trending up, although there are some concerns due to his injuries. Goder would be a nice weapon for Drew Brees and would be the long-term tight end for them as they fail to sign or bring back Jimmy Graham this past free agency. 
28, Pittsburgh Steelers, Rashawn Evans, linebacker, Alabama. Evans brings an athletic presence who can fill multiple roles. He was more of an edge defender early in his college career, and he pressured the quarterback on 67 of his 284 career rushes. However, he also showed well in a more traditional role over the last two years. 29, Jacksonville Jaguars, Isaiah Wynn, guard Georgia. Wynn would bring another nice upgrade to a Jags offensive line to take pressure off of Blake Bortles and Leonard Fournette. He can play tackle if needed, but will succeed as a guard instantly. He plays with outstanding leverage and has the athleticism to mirror pass rushers. This could be a steal. 30, Minnesota Vikings, Connor Williams, offensive tackle, guard, Texas. The Vikes have options here, so they take Williams to improve their offensive line. Williams provides versatility and would start at one of the tackle spots on this Vikings team. 31, New England Patriots, Josh Jackson, cornerback, Iowa. Jackson's stock is dropping, and the Pats could land a steal here with the guy that led the FBS interceptions last year. Jackson has size and speed, and that would be a nice fit in the Pats secondary with Malcolm Butler gone. 32, Philadelphia Eagles, Jair Alexander, cornerback, Louisville. Alexander is a fast riser on many people's mock boards, and the Eagles can use another corner after losing Patrick Robinson in free agency. He is great in man-to-man coverage and could be drafted higher than this. That's my, my mock draft, and that's it for today's podcast. I'll be back tomorrow recapping all the games from NBA playoffs, Stanley Cup playoffs, Major League Baseball, go over any other news that breaks and whatnot. You can subscribe to this podcast by clicking subscribe to get notifications on when future podcasts come out. I hope you guys have a great day, everybody.